Thank you for checking out crypto.chartguys.com, the source for technical analysis in the cryptocurrency world. We are proud to announce our own crypto alert system designed to give you the most critical technical trading information possible no matter where you are. Keep your eyes on the market with mobile or email alerts for MACD crosses, RSI levels, and even inside bar alerts for dozens of coins across multiple exchanges. New features and proprietary chart guys indicators are already in development. Our alert system is very easy to customize and utilize, so don't hesitate to sign up for the most effective crypto trading tool on the market at crypto.chartguys.com. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Let's talk about cryptocurrencies. So we're going to look at the big three and we're also going to look at the pairing of ETH and BTC because it is becoming apparent to me that I am a big believer and kind of hoping, to be honest, that we're going to see the flippening occur this year. I want to see ETH in the lead. I want to see functionality rewarded rather than originality rewarded. So that's a personal opinion. I don't usually give those, but that's where I stand. I would be much more comfortable with the market correlating to Ethereum with all of the apps and all of the uh, you know, functionality and potential real world usage and uh, we'll see how it plays out. And we're going to look at that chart and some things I'm looking at. We're going to look at longer term perspective things. We're going to look at shorter term perspective things. Taxes. We got Coinbase and GDAX. They're sending out their 1099s. Don't throw up. That's not the number that you are going to have to be taxed on. That is just the total transaction uh, volume in terms of the amount of buying and selling. So if I have $5,000 and I buy and sell at break even, that's going to show up as $10,000. So again, Get an accountant, make your life easy. I did not get an accountant last year. I wasn't trading cryptocurrency last year, but just in terms of, uh, you know, doing the chart guys taxes and doing my taxes, I'll never do that again in my life. And if accountants only knew how much I would pay them to do it for me, they could be charging 10 times as much. So here on Bitcoin, we have a weekly chart. And honestly, I looked at something on the weekly chart just now. I did a, a little talk with Nuggets News, check that out. But the volume... Look at the bull volume on the way up and look at the bear volume on the way down. There is no bear volume comparatively on this pullback. And if you tell me this is a stock, I say this is a very bullish stock and I'm about ready to get an entry going. We're going to look for a weekly higher low to form. We're going to look for a bounce on the weekly and we're going to set a lower high. And not saying the bottom's in for now. Well, I am saying the bottom's in for tonight. But in terms of, you know, this being our daily bottom, there's some signs that it could be and we'll look at those. But... I'm looking for this weekly chart to turn around and to make a move back to between 12 and 14,000. And we need to see the daily trend shift to higher lows and higher highs to be confident in that. But that is definitely something that I've got my attention on. And the daily chart for Bitcoin, look at the, and we actually just had the candlestick go over. And also the, the black background here, someone suggested it and got some thumbs up in the last video. So I give it a try. And if you like it or hate it, let me know in the comments. And I don't really care what color I use as long as it's not white because it hurts my eyes. So look at the daily volume. This is the highest volume Bitcoin has seen since back on December 20th. And that was when we had our original dump. That's significant. That is a potential volume climax at the bottom. We looked back here. Look at the volume here where it looked like this was a volume climax. And it was temporarily. But that volume was 13.5 thousand. And here we are with 35 thousand, almost 200% more volume. This is significant. This is the potential that our daily low is in for now, and we're going to see a bounce back towards 10, 11,000 in the fairly short term, referring to the next week or so. So I'm not confident just yet. I need to see things play out. I need to see the five minute higher low and higher high, which we've seen on the bounce. I need the 15 minute, which we've seen. I need the hourly, which we just saw on Ethereum, not yet on Bitcoin. Once we get the four hour higher low and higher high, then we start looking for the daily chart to get some significant bounce. And if the daily chart gives us a higher low and higher high, then we're going to be looking for the trend to change. But we have to be watching the 12 and 26 exponential resistances, which have rejected two bounce attempts from that exponential level. So here on the four hour time frame, look at the volume again, volume climaxes down at the bottom, big time volume. And now we are looking at an oversold bounce on the four hour time frame likely to form an inside bar on this four hour and we're gonna have to break bullish and continue this bounce and see follow through so here's the hourly time frame this is a potential bull flag and we saw ethereum follow through with a higher high we did not see that on bitcoin just yet so bitcoin's looking for a bullish mac decross and we have to break the high of this bounce 9234 that is the level overnight 
that the bulls really want to break. There's no red flags. There's declining bear volume on consolidation. That's a good sign. Look at the bull volume on the candlestick for the climax. Big time follow through. We got all kind. We just put out that volume alert for the alert system. And it was certainly firing off today. Everything was firing off price shears and uh, all kinds of stuff indicating that the low was in. But what it really was for me that let me know our low of the day is in for now was volume on the five minute time frame. And how I picked that out is by looking at, we've got the, I've got a hold going still, but we've got the five minute volume. Look at the bear volume down at the low. We saw some decent bear volume. It was 650 coins and then 800 coins. And then look at the two candlesticks in bull volume. It was 933 coins and 1.2 thousand. So we're talking 2,100 coins in 10 minutes on the way up. And the bear climax volume in the 10 minutes heading to the way down was only 1,400. So 50% more volume in the 10 minute time frame span for the bulls. And look at the candlestick shape. That tells me it's all bull volume. The low of the candlestick is the open. The close is the high. This is all bull volume on the way up, just like it was all bear volume on the way down. We don't have any wicks or anything where we have to be assuming, well, it's part bull, part bear volume. That is all bull volume. When I saw that, I said, that's our low for now. And I was actually live for members when that happened and it caught my eye and said, pretty confident that that's our low. And then we had the increasing bull volume on the next leg to the upside. But here we are testing a key support and not seeing the confidence and the kind of follow through that the bulls would like to see. We'd like to see a five minute higher low and higher high pattern now that we just saw this little bounce attempt. Let's see if we can hold this double low at 8,900, which the bulls are attempting to right now. If we can't hold 8,900, I'm looking at a little consolidation low down at 8,700 or so, this little higher low and higher high pattern on the five minute time frame. So a bunch of resistances to pick out with the main one, 9,234. Let's look at Ethereum. So Ethereum on the weekly time frame is forming inside bars. We had an inside bar last week. We have an inside bar forming this week. As we were down pushing the low, I was scaling into my order. I'll go into the details on the shorter term time frames, but started scaling in based on Bitcoin breaking 9,000. I said, once Bitcoin breaks psychological 9,000, I'm going to begin scaling in because all of the time frames were oversold on Bitcoin uh, sufficiently for me to be comfortable with beginning to scale in. So I scaled in at uh, low 980s, low 970s, low 960s, low 950s, and uh, got a good amount of fills. And I am still holding at this point because the more oversold timeframes you have, the longer the bounce is anticipated to play out. So I will likely take a little bit of profit shortly just to give myself some more wiggle room. But I will keep a good portion of this position to see if we can get, you know, four hours solid bounces and maybe even this Bitcoin daily bounce that the volume indicates is possible. So my point is when we were heading down to our low here, the odds of holding the inside bar for a second week in a row were high. The odds of breaking 905 were not high, again, because Bitcoin was dumping and forming a climax and we still had another, you know, $30 to go before we broke support. And it just looked like we were going to form another weekly inside bar. And where we stand right now, that looks a lot more likely than not. So heading into next week, we will have multiple weekly inside bars to be watching on Ethereum. Daily time frame for Ethereum, look at the volume. Again, highest volume that we've seen in a very long time. So let's see if the bulls can turn around and, and shift with that. We saw a, a interesting morning and correlations were all over the place with Bitcoin. And it was a very favorable correlation with Ethereum, favoring Ethereum bulls. But... That shifted and we saw the dump obviously as well. And what happened is we'll look at the ETH BTC chart in just a minute, but it got way overextended. It's a very bullish chart, but it needs normal healthy consolidation just like anything. And that is why we started to see a bit more significant sell-off. So here on the four hour time frame, volume climax, bullish reversal candlestick. It's not being confirmed. We're seeing an inside bar form and we'll look to break this inside bar. Let's see, it's forming at 3 p.m. So we've got... Wow, my brain just stopped working. Three to seven, so seven, and we'll look at 11 p.m. Eastern. So this this candlestick just started forming. We got another four hours almost uh, until this closes. So we're not going to see an inside bar four-hour candlestick break until very early East Coast time. So watching the hourly time frame, there's our little higher low and higher high. So a more bullish move than we saw on Bitcoin. Here's our support level. 988 is a must hold for these bulls to keep an hourly higher low and try and reverse this trend. 
Also want to point out the hourly chart that Bitcoin rejected from the exponential 12 and 26 period resistance. This is the exponential 12 rejecting the price on the first attempt. That will happen far more often than not. Use those exponential moving averages. So Ethereum didn't even make it to its exponential resistance, but it did get that higher low and higher high. Key support, 988. Key resistance, 1030. So we'll see if the bulls can maintain higher lows on the hourly. And again, declining bear volume, good sign for the bulls. We have cooled off hourly RSI levels. And on the four-hour time frame, we were never oversold. Well, when we were down at our low, we were just starting to get oversold on Ethereum. But it is Bitcoin's RSI that I'm most concerned with. So Ethereum on the five-minute time frame. Here was our scaling in on the break correlating with 9,000 breaking on Bitcoin and just scaled in. And the volume was not as significant as it was on Bitcoin in terms of the bull bounce, but increasing bull volume, declining bear volume, definitely what the bulls want to see. And right now it's just a really good looking chart and the bounce is playing out exactly as the bulls would hope. So it's all about 988 overnight and 1030. We'll see which breaks first as we're right in the middle of that channel currently. We are still going to stay correlated to Bitcoin. There's no escaping that at this point. And right now, Bitcoin's at the low of this consolidation. So we need to see Bitcoin get its act together and get this bounce following through with an hourly higher low and higher high, which it has not done yet. And if we do that, we'll get a bullish MACD cross to go with it. So I am still in Ethereum. I will protect my position if we break 988. But I want some more. I want to see a more significant bounce play out. Let's check in on Litecoin. Litecoin getting some nice volatility. And I just looked at my information and 66% of my entire profits in 2017 were from Litecoin. And in 2018, I would say 95% of my profits are Ethereum. So definitely shifts uh, things that I trade and it's based off of liquidity and the amount of capital being used and things like that. But Obviously, Ethereum is in a bullish uptrend on the daily and weekly time frame, much more so than Litecoin and Bitcoin. So again, look at the volume on Litecoin. Look at that bull volume and look at the bear volume. It's almost non-existent. It's very surprising that we can see this kind of a drop on that kind of volume. You would think you'd need more volume than that, but it's really just uh, buyers rushing to get in and not many people waiting to buy on a pullback, essentially. That's FOMO in full effect. So here we are. Looking for a higher low on the weekly. I do believe it's coming shortly. Even if today's not the low, I do believe it will be shortly. We will see that low. And Bitcoin is bouncing from oversold on the daily time frame as well. That RSI did break 30. So here on Litecoin, a little bit of a lower wick. Again, the high volume is there, highest volume in months. And we need to see an hourly higher low and higher high. We have our top of the bounce is 148, just rounding here. And we need a higher low and higher high and a bull MACD cross. Look at us reject from these exponential resistances on all these bounce attempts, unable to get over them on the hourly time frame. Ever since this pullback started, that has to change. We have to see higher lows and higher highs, and we have to see those levels become support. Volume climax on the four hour time frame, four hour inside bar. Again, same thing as Bitcoin. The volatility means higher risk and higher reward percentage gains or losses on Litecoin comparative to Bitcoin but I'm choosing Ethereum because it has a more bullish pattern. So, and Bitcoin right now, not cooperating for these bulls, heading down to lower lows on this consolidation after the top of the bounce. So have to get this higher low and turn things around. And right now, Bitcoin spoiling the party. Ethereum was ready to go. Another, another Leroy moment. Ethereum hitting higher highs. Bitcoin saying, nope. Not just yet. So here's the ETH BTC chart. Here's the weekly chart. We had the all-time high. We pulled back very significantly and then just a V-shaped recovery. And there's no way we're going to get a new all-time high from the low of consolidation when there's that much ground to make up. So this is uh, upper wick forming of profit taking, a potential bearish reversal spinning top candlestick, which will be healthy. And we could pull back. What, what I'm going to be looking for, which will tell me that Ethereum is going to overtake the number one market cap spot, is if we see a higher low on the weekly and then a higher high. So that's going to take a couple months to play out, potentially. But if we get that higher low and higher high on this chart and look back towards the all-time high, those market caps will be very close, if not you know, flipping to Ethereum being the lead. So here on the daily time frame, a huge bull move, a bearish reversal, shooting star candlestick with an upper wick of profit taking, and anything above 8276 support, which is our last consolidation low, will be a higher low on the daily. 
So the bulls should be able to easily form a higher low on the daily and keep this uptrend in their favor, but we could still pull back, you know, significantly 10, 20% and still keep that higher low. So four hour time frame again, extremely overbought. The RSI was up in the mid eighties up at the highs today. And what was going on when we were up at our climax with, you know, ETH BTC being the most bullish Bitcoin was pulling back fairly significantly and Ethereum was seeing bots market buy at the ask. And that was keeping Ethereum really strong. And when I saw that happening, I said, wow, there is definitely money shifting from Bitcoin to Ethereum. And uh, that's what we saw. Now we're seeing healthy consolidation, trying to establish a higher low on the four hour time frame. 11 is that level right now. But again, we could see days of consolidation and it will still be normal and healthy on the overall uptrend for ETH BTC. So bulls in control of that overall trend. This is something to watch for the rest of 2018 because if we do get this shift and we do get the market cap shifting, I'll be very interested to see, do we start to see correlation shift? Meaning, you know, the the cryptocurrency space is now going to follow Ethereum and not so much uh, Bitcoin. So a whole lot of interesting stuff going on. The bottom line is the bottom is in for tonight, in my opinion. And we are going to be looking for hourly higher low and higher high on Bitcoin to indicate that this bounce could potentially see a move up towards 10,000 and some shift on the daily time frame. So bulls haven't really proven much yet aside from an oversold bounce. And overnight, the next 12 hours or so is when the bulls need to show up and prove themselves. So I appreciate you watching. Don't forget the burden of proof is on the bulls. The bears have all the control. We cannot give the bulls any benefit of the doubt. They have to prove to us with volume and breaking resistance and forming higher lows and higher highs. They have to prove to us that they are now in control and that hasn't happened in a long time. So it's something that we're certainly keeping an eye out for. So I appreciate you watching. Again, check out that Nuggets News interview that I just did. Just some talk on fundamentals, just a short little discussion. And I appreciate you all watching. I hope you do good things. I certainly know I will. And we'll see you tomorrow.